Despite all the dinosaurs that we have in Washington, it is still hard to conceive how old dinosaurs really are and how old other dinosaurs are compared to dinosaurs compared to us, and that is a weird science effect that boggles my mind. My wife and I just watched the newest Jurassic World, and it was okay, I guess. It's the... It's the Jurassic Park 3 of the Jurassic World franchise, if, if we're being honest. I'm a little bit of a dino nerd, so I shared a random dino fact with my wife that boggled her mind, and she said that I should share it all with you. See, when people tend to think about dinosaurs, we think about them kind of like Jurassic Park, where all of these famous dinosaurs that come to mind when you think dinosaurs were roaming the plains and jungles and deserts side by side. Just, you know, minus the people, unless you're Ken Ham, and then you think, Jesus rode a velociraptor onto the ark or something. And all of those dinosaurs came to an end because of an asteroid 66 million years ago. But the way we think about time and our perception of the past is rarely accurate. Even when we think about human history, we are so messed up. I mean, when we talk about primitive caveman hunting woolly mammoths on the North American plain, that was a long time ago. And when we talk about the pyramids, that was obviously part of an advanced civilization much closer to us today than cavemen. Except it wasn't. By the time the last last woolly mammoth was hunted to extinction by dudes in loincloths, the Egyptian empire and some of its pyramids had existed for hundreds of years. So yeah, Sid and Manny could have taken a vacation to Egypt and seen some of the structures that we can still see there today. So it's easy to see how our perception of prehistory can be wildly off the mark. If you ask people to name five dinosaurs off the top of their head, it'd probably be T-Rex, obviously, maybe Velociraptor, Triceratops, of course, Stegosaurus, and maybe Brachiosaurus or the long necks. And when we picture them, we all picture them as the same part of an era, a, a point in time that they were all in together. But we as humans, oh my God, Sophie. <laughs> this, is, this is a whole tree. <sighs> we as humans were closer to seeing T-Rex and Triceratops than T-Rex and Triceratops were to seeing Stegosaurus and Brachiosaurus. How wild is that? We missed out on Sarah and Rex by about 66 million years when that asteroid wiped them off the face of the planet. But by the time they came about, Brachiosaurus and Stegosaurus had been gone for 80 million years. And Brachiosaurus roamed the Earth for close to 9 million years, Stegosaurus 5 million years, Triceratops 3 million, and T-Rex about 2.5 million years. By comparison, anatomically modern humans you know, us today, Homo sapiens, have existed for around 300,000 years. The earliest in the Homo genus came around two and a half million years ago. And I've done other videos on, on just our weird perception of the past and history and just wild things that you would not expect, like the fact that sharks are older than trees. Or things that we think are further apart than they are are really not, like the last surviving Civil War vet died when Eisenhower was in office. The man fought a war with a musket that ended slavery as a teenager and could have flown on a jet plane as a grandfather. That's how little time separates the ass kicking of General Lee to the jet age. And that's how little time we have been here. If the history of Earth was a book, there are species of dinosaurs that are separated by chapters, and we have barely finished a word. And the fact that trying to touch on the intangibility of time is totally tricky and tantalizingly trippy, well, that is pretty mind-boggling.